Hello students. So let's come to our next video of group theory. In last video, I have just discussed the what is definition of group and what is condition of abelian group. So today I will just try to solve two very basic fundamental question of uh, the group uh, and what is the condition of group which are, we can verify whether these are group or not. This uh, uh, basic uh, character of element will belongs to some group or not. So from this particular example, you can just uh, clear your concept about the uh, nature of a group and what is the property of a group. So first question as I have given you in, as your homework, so we will just talk about the cube root of an, or cube root of unity under the simple multiplication. So what is this particular, suppose I am just going to define a group and that particular group is basically a uh, 1 omega and omega square and these are basically cube root of unity and the property is that omega cube is equal to 1. So we have this particular information about cube root of unity and the same time what is operation here operation is just a simple multiplication just a simple multiplication as we are just going to multiply the number. So let us try to uh, verify each and every step. So the first step is all about closer relation. So we will just check one so I can just give something like this. So I can just give some notation such that so this will be A, this will be B, this will be C and uh, if we have this particular notation and uh, we can just go for A operation B and that will be equal to 1 into omega is equal to omega and we have A operation C is equal to 1 into omega square is equal to omega square. So yes, A operation B will be omega that is the part of group. A operation C is omega square that is also part of group and we can just go for B operation C and that value is equal to we have omega dot omega square and this value is equal to omega cube. And uh, again we can go for also C operation B and that value is equal to omega square into omega. That value is equal to omega cube and omega cube is 1, omega cube is 1. So yes, we can easily find that if we are taking each and every operation to each with each and every element, all the element will going to belong to this group. So yes, it is just going to follow the closure relation. And now we can see here a that is 1, if we are going to multiply 1 with omega, we are getting omega. We are going to multiply a with c, we are getting omega square, 1 into omega square is omega square. So I can easily identify that 1 is the basically identity element. So we can easily see this 1 is identity element. Why? Because if this 1 is going to multiply with the omega, we are getting the same number. This one is going to multiply with omega square, we are getting the same number. And now we have to just talk about the inverse. So what is going for the inverse? Here you can see, if B is going to operate on C, we are getting 1. That means this omega is inverse of, is inverse of omega square. And same time, omega square is also, here you can see, omega square is going to multiply with omega we are getting omega cube that is 1. Omega square is also inverse of, of omega. And uh, now we can finally check whether they are following the associative rule or not. So what is going to happen? A operation B operation C and we can easily find A is 1 into omega and here into omega square. So 1 into omega is omega and omega square is omega square and that value is 1 and if we are going for this thing we can verify this thing A operation B operation C and that value is equal to 1 into omega into omega square that is 1 into omega cube that will be 1. So these two are same so it is also going to follow 
basically your associative rule. So hence it is also going to follow associative rule. Then they all belongs to group. So this yes, 1 omega and omega square that is cube root of one unity under the simple multiplication is a group. And now what we have to do? We have to check whether they are abelian group or not. So for the abelian group, what we have to do? We have to just go for just we can say yes, one is the either you can operate it one from left and right, you will get omega. But the most important thing is we have to check here B operation C. That means omega into omega square is equal to omega cube, that is 1. C operation B, that is omega square into omega is equal to omega cube, that is 1. So yes, here A operation B is equal to B operation A. So yes, it is abelian group. It is abelian group. So yes, students. So if anybody will ask you that whether the complex number that belongs to cube root of unity that is 1 omega omega square is a group under the simple multiplication and it is also the abelian group. So let us try to go for a next question. In the next question what we are taking we have we are just taking all the possible integer and in this particular all the possible integer what we have we have negative positive as well as 0. So we have to check or the collection of all the possible integer under the simple multiplication, under the algebraic multiplication, whether it is group or not. And if it is group, it is abelian group or not non-abelian group. So let's try to go for this. So in the last problem, we can see that number of element is finite. So it is finite dimensional group. But here you will see in this particular problem, what we have, the number of element is basically infinite. So this is the beautiful example of infinite group. So what do you have? Let us define a group G and that value has some minus n, minus m and minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 2, m, n and all the possible element. So here we have all these element. So these are collection of all integer which may be positive, which may be negative. So now let us, and what is my operation? My operation is just a simple multiplication. So what will happen? So we will check, if we will take any number m, so plus n, and m plus n, if m is integer, n in integer, let's say this number is p, then p will be integer. So if it is integer, then plus we have some integer, then you have p as an integer. So yes, it is following the closure relation. It is just going to follow the closure relation. Next, we will just try to check about the associativity. So you have m plus n plus p and same time we have m plus n plus p so if we are getting, getting m plus n, that will be some integer. Let's say this integer is a w and this integer is p. So w plus p is also integer. So this is also belongs to this particular group. And here you can have, you have m and n plus p will have some integer. Let's say this will be your x. So n plus x is x and you will check the w plus p is equal to m plus x. We can take one example. Let us take m is equal to 2, n is equal to 3, and here p is equal to 4. So 2 plus 3 plus 4. So first we are adding 2 plus 3, that is 5. So that is 5 plus 4, that is 9. And here we are taking 2 plus 3 plus 4. So 3 plus 4 is 7, plus 2 is 9. So you have 2 plus uh, 7 is equal to 9. So yes, they are following the associative rule. So yes, they are following the closure relationship. They are following the associative relationship. And now we have to just identify what is the identity element. So what is the identity element? It's a very interesting. If we have 0 into this particular collection of uh, element, so if we have 0 plus any integer, we will get same integer. Either it is positive or negative, we are getting the same integer. So 0 is the identified as 
identity element in this particular uh, group element. And now we have to just check all about the inverse. So what is all about inverse? So here we have also negative sign. So what we will take? We have minus m. And we are just going to add to the plus m. What we will get? We will get 0. And this 0 is nothing but the identity. So yes, you have the, the negative of all particular number is the basically inverse. For example, if I am talking about 2, then what is the inverse of 2? Then minus 2 is the is inverse of 2. Inverse of 2. So you can easily see. And now we have to check whether they are abelian or non-abelian. So it is naturally abelian. Why? Because we will get m plus n is equal to n plus m. So yes, they are abelian. So they are just abelian. So you can just take a number and verify each and everything. You will find that the collection of all possible integer including negative and zero will form a group and which is abelian group. But the dimension of this group is basically infinite dimensional group. So students, these two are very fundamental example to understand the concept of group, the property of group. In the next video, we will just go for some more example which is related to some physical things such as rotation and all about that thing. So up to that, you have to just go for all this video and you have to just, before going to this video, you have to just go for lecture 2. This is very important. Thank you.